Welcome to Automatic Transmission Channel. Today we have a uh, 1950 Jetta Way 315 transmission that we're going to do a teardown and actually a, bu a build, but this is going to be part one. This is going to be the uh, teardown of this unit. It's a 1950. Uh, I'm not too familiar with, with those. I haven't done a lot of those, in other words. Uh, I'm more familiar with the uh, with, uh, later model uh, power glides and stuff like that, you know, uh, C4, C6s, FMX, Crusomatics from the 60s and 70s up, C4, C3s. Uh, Jetaway, this one has a uh, torque converter, which actually is not a torque converter. It's a, a fluid coupler without a stator and uh, it's attached to the transmission. You have to take that apart, you know, to get to the, you know, to the transmission itself. And uh, I mean, it's a very uh, unique unit and we're gonna dig into that. So this is gonna be a special uh, edition, you know, uh, Jetta Way 315. These are not very popular on the road. Parts are available. We got the parts here. Uh, the band, we're gonna see on what shape it is, but we're gonna have it relined uh, because those bands, you cannot get them anymore. So you have to get them relined. So let's go ahead and uh, and switch the camera to, towards the transmission 1950 out of a Cadillac uh, 1950 Jetaway 315 is one of the first turbo hydromatic units I mean you will see those there's different versions of this unit you have the Buick Cadillac and uh, very unique very unique for those years and then uh, there was a lot of power loss because of the torque converter didn't have a stator and uh, I mean we can get more into details onto that but for now let's go ahead and do the tear down and part two will be the assembly process or the rebuild all right guys let's turn the camera over to the other side all right guys well uh, here's the Jetta Way 315 and the first thing we're gonna do like always we're gonna move everything from the outside and uh, here we have the transmission cooler, Tram two transmission cooler lines going to a uh, transmission cooler and it has two coolant lines that go into the cooler. We're going to remove this and uh, we're going to do something different on this uh, once, once it is out. Hold that thought right quick. I need to get a little extension and a ratchet. We're gonna use a crow's foot wrench to loosen them up. We don't wanna strip them. We got one loose. Let's go ahead and loosen up the other one. All right, we got both of them loose. Go ahead and take our crow's foot wrench off. And what we're gonna do we're going to remove the two bolts that are on the extension housing. Remove those two bolts. Remove these two bolts. Now with a five, five eighths wrench. We're going to remove the cooler lines. This thing is very, very heavy. The size as it is, I didn't think it would be that heavy. It's actually as heavy as an LCT-1000 Allison. And Allison's are pretty heavy, but I think this is a little bit heavier. I mean, we struggle to get it on the bench. I mean, it is that heavy. Transmission, transmission jack, didn't like it either. Cast iron. I know everything's made of uh, light aluminum. The bell housing's aluminum, and it seems like the extension housing is also aluminum. So here's our cooler. 
transmission cooler. We're gonna set that to the side. The fluid is very nasty. We got some cooling coming off, as you can see. All right, we're gonna remove the extension housing. It looks like we got a breather here and we don't wanna damage that, so we're gonna have to remove, remove that as well. And that is, uh, looks like a 716s. Yep, 716s. Let's go ahead and take that off. Have that breather hose. Little bolt. Let's get that off the little hole. And here's a our breather tube. It has a hole here and a hole down at the bottom. You can see that. All right. We're gonna put the hole down bolt back on there, so we won't lose track of it. Let's go ahead and uh, remove our extension housing bolts. But before that, well, yeah, let's go ahead and take it off. I mean, we could take our speedometer. I don't think there's anything back here that would interfere with that. But let me look for a socket large enough. It looks like a one inch socket. We can remove our speedometer. Yes, it is one inch. Our speedometer housing and our speedometer gear. It takes a seal back here. Genoa 315 speedometer housing and speedometer. Let's go ahead and remove our extension housing. Looks like we could have uh, blasted this transmission before teardown. It's going on a classic car. So I'm, I'm probably going to blast it while it's disassembled. All the parts make it look, make it look nice. I know everybody's going to the LS swaps and all that stuff, you know, but there's some other people that like their cars original and that's what our plan is with with this car all right we're gonna tap that extension housing a little bit and expose what's behind it like the smell of old antique fluid. This is our extension housing. It's been a long time I haven't smelled this smell. This transmission used to take a different type of fluid and they don't make that fluid anymore because of the sperm well. You know, they used to kill sperm well and use, uh, I guess, their fat to make the uh, transmission fluid. And, uh, you know how that goes, you know, back in the 60s or 70s. You can't do that anymore. So, uh, actually, LubeGuard came up with a uh, additive, you know, that would replace or, yeah, will replace the, uh, the lubricating properties of, of the sperm well. And this is a seven half inch. This is our governor. As you can see, it's a governor control, governor control unit. And this has to be nice and free. If the governor hangs up, 
won't shift right. I know I started back here. I should have started in the front where that torque converter is or that fluid coupler is. I keep calling it a torque converter, but it is a fluid coupler. A coupling device, you know, like your clutch or whatever. 16 bolts right here. Pry this off. There we go. Has a ball bearing on it. Our governor housing. And here we have our secondary fluid pump. And this pump right here on these older vehicles, you can actually push start these cars. Some power glides have a, a secondary fluid pump in the rear, and some power glides don't. Some old Mercedes transmissions, they used to have a, uh, an auxiliary pump as well. Your starter went out or your battery went dead, you would you, you could push start these vehicles. Let's see here. I have a let's see. It's attached with a bolt. I need to take this bracket off so I can flip the transmission over. Let's get our half inch socket. As you can see here, the torque converter or the fluid coupler. bent this goes like that it goes up like that there we go and we will straighten that up this bracket goes goes like this and it was bent outwards but we'll fix that all right now that we have uh, the rear done I'm gonna mark the four the, the four studs that uh, they go towards the flex plate as you can see this the flywheel is part of the converter so I'm just gonna mark him make sure that we return those to the same and this one right here I'm just gonna put an X on it and I'm gonna paint that stud yellow that way we go back to where they were Has some locking nuts on it as you can see all all the studs look the same which is want to make sure that we put everything back to where it was got a bolt stuck in here I mean a nut stuck in here thing tap it again got all three out got one more As you can see, uh, we have a drain plug. I'm going to go ahead and try to separate this. Get 
at all that fluid that's coming out. That fluid looks pretty nasty. Nasty, nasty fluid. I hope we don't have any hard part damage on this because that's gonna that's gonna be a, a challenge to find this hard part. Now we got a wasp nest. Okay. As you can see we have two dial pins right here. get behind it you get a pick get this pick right here it'll give me a 90 degree okay we got our front cover have a bushing in there I'm gonna see about the availability of these bushings I would like to uh, replace bushings on this thing see if possible if not we're gonna have no choice but to rerun them Let me get some pliers uh, where you at where you at Atta boy. right here Okay, let's see. Uh, too big? Hmm. Well, let's go with these. Let's go with these. A little smaller. Remove this snap ring. Remove this snap ring. Put it on the shop towel. Let's go ahead and uh, remove the pump. Well, this is not the pump, but. As you can see there, there's another bushing there. Oh. There's another snap ring. And these, I need the other pliers that I just had in my hand. This is a little larger. Another snap ring. And now we should be able to oh we have another little snap ring down here that separates both uh, both the pump and the turbine as you can see here we are missing the stator the stator goes in between of a torque converter I'm gonna see if I can uh, open one up later and make a little video to show you the difference between this fluid coupler and a torque converter okay so here we have this side and we have a planet on the other side and a washer let's go ahead and put it here we have the race for that washer we have some dampening dampener springs as a matter of fact let me get this over here we can get it in camera view so we remove our front cover first and this is held together by a snap ring here and a snap ring here to keep it from from moving right so this would be considered like one fan and then another fan in front of it and remember you have those two snap rings keeping them separate all this those three snap rings separating it from one another 
thrust washer and the uh, the race now we have a uh, sun gear and we have another thrust washer and it's race we have our ring gear actually this this washer here has uh, two tabs there we go and now we have our our cover with our dampener and this dampener goes on this uh, on this uh, ring gear for the planet as you can see these castellations right here these notches they go here one two three four five six and you have six notches on this on this thing so there it is our torque converter we have another little washer here that I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that over there get this little spacer here and this actually turns our fluid pump over here and here's our front seal the front seal for this uh, for the pump all right as you see here it's got a lot of metal that's no big deal let's go ahead and put this to the side over here and get this fluid coupler now we're going to remove our bell housing which uh, has our pump on it but before that i'm going to uh, flip it over remove our pan and uh, take our valve body off so we have removed so far the secondary pump with our governor housing and our extension housing, our uh, speedometer, or yeah, speedometer. I was gonna say vehicle speed sensor, but that's just a speedometer. And our uh, fluid coupler unit from this getaway 315. All right, let's go ahead and flip it over. Ooh, heavy, heavy. Now this right here, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, so I don't have any issues with this thing. This pump, pump assembly parts. I'll put them right there. I actually had it on the wrong spot. These two little check balls go right here. One right here, and one right there. Two little check balls. For some reason, I put it in the center of the gear. That was my bad. Secondary pump in our governor housing. Hydromatic. It's a Hydromatic 315. You have Hydromatic, basically uh, General Motors called all these transmission Hydromatics. You have the Hydromatic 350, 400, and it will have a tag saying Hydromatic on the... Hydromatic stands for Hydraulic Automatic. That's what hydromatic uh, means. To take our bell housing, we're going to have to uh, attach two bolts. remove our our transmission pan well it's on there now let's see if we can try to pry this thing a little bit oops 
I don't I didn't want it to take this off yet but I guess I separated it a little bit I'm gonna have to go in to where a bolt is there we go if you're gonna uh, stick a screwdriver in there you can use a, a putty knife or whatever always do it where there's a bolt because if you just bend that I mean you can always straighten it up and it's gonna be where the bolt is at if you do it in between two bolts then you're gonna create a bolt here and you're gonna create a leak and it's gonna, it's gonna be harder to fix if you do that whoa look at all that metal man that's a lot of metal a lot of metal all right this filter right here looks like a FMX filter the only difference between the FMX filter has a little little band that holds it together the FMX is a uh, Ford you know but I guess back then the engineers engineering this uh, units go ahead and take this bolt off this bolt holds that tube the pickup tube as you can see we have a pickup tube for the main pump in the front and then we have a pickup tube for the secondary pump in the rear this is a valve body bolt I'm gonna go ahead and uh, as you can see this this is the filter this is the transmission filter we have the pickup tube for our rear pump and we should have an o-ring here which is very very hard yeah it's squared it's old and squared it takes an o-ring for our secondary pump and then we have our tube for the main pump as you can see you can push start this vehicles all right let's go ahead and take this servo assembly off first and then we're going to take our main valve body off and this is our linkage our parking mechanism parking deal and i can all already see that our band is gone I have a lot of uh, flakes back there and looks like the drum where the band right still looks all right okay so we have a uh, uh, where's the other socket at let's see hold that thought right there uh, five eight it's nine sixteens there we go grab the wrong one So we remove these three bolts, 916s. They have a little washer on them. Keep those three together and remove our servo. It has a guide pin, so it's on the guide pin pretty good. Guide pin's right here. It's coming. There we go. We have our return spring for our servo. <laughs> Look at all that gunk in there. That's a bunch of metal. Put this to the side. Over here, our servo. And our servo pushes our band down there in here. You can see the band right here. I'm moving the band. That's what moves our band. So once we remove this, I'm gonna put the pan back on. I'm gonna flip it up, up uh, right side up, and remove our uh, bell housing from it. Get our 716 socket. And remove valve body bolts yeah. 
there we go we just came undone from the manual valve and from the kick down valve here put this to the side let's put this right here i'm gonna put this over here we have a bolt here that we're going to remove And if we don't remove this, this won't come out. So, I mean, you gotta remove that. Stand it up. Get my pan back on. Okay. Now let's get this big chunk of metal rolled over. I don't know exactly how heavy this thing is, but it was heavy to get on the bench. Okay, let's see. Five eighths. Little extension to get to those bolts. Five bolts, five eighths. All right, dramatic 315. We got another one, six bolts. Got a boy. Now, we already removed the bolt from the inside, so this should come out. Oh, let's tap it lightly. Add a boy, and it comes out. We have a bushing and a little race, metal race. And here is the other part of the torque converter deal. I'm gonna go ahead and put this over there. pump o-ring this pump o-ring looks new it looks like somebody just uh, sealed the front of this unit the front seal looks new as well and here's the other race for that the second two spacers okay it's got to come out See any other snap rings in here? Yeah, it's kind of hard to grab. It's like that bushing, a little damage there. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and see if I can just uh, pry it out. Go ahead and take our pan bag off. Get our pan over here. Okay. That's a snap ring here. There we go. 
had a boy. And we're off. Oh man. This thing was thing was rubbing back there. Pretty bad. So this is where all the aluminum was coming from. Have both seating rings on there. This thing don't sound too good. It's missing something here. Yep, it's missing something. Okay, I'll deal with this later. Let's go ahead and uh, tear this down. We've got to take this. We've got to take this apart. Figure out what went wrong in there. Got to press it out. All right. So let's go ahead and continue. Let's dig in. I'm gonna see if I can find that part. But for now. We're going to do the complete teardown of this 315 and we're going to worry about that little piece later. All right. This is Okay, the snap ring popped off of that thing. Yeah. That's what it was. And I'm turn I turn that and it doesn't look too good. It doesn't sound too good. Okay, so now I need to remove this piece. We have two guide pins. I'm gonna tap it. Let's see if I can tap it on both sides. I don't have a hole on this side. I already took our bolt off. You know what, let me remove this piece because this piece is in the way. Uh, it has a clutch back here. There's nothing on it. It's gone. I do have a new one for it. Get this piece right there. We have our uh, planet retainer there. We have our parking mechanism. I'm gonna leave this on there for now. Let's try and get this off. Yeah, this thing is really on there.
All right, let's hold that thought right quick. Let me get something. All right, guys. Well, I granted got my puller, and I don't, I don't think it's gonna. Well, we might be able to grab it from there, and I couldn't find my Allen wrenches. It's a uh, 732. We gotta take this piece off first. These are the cooler line adapters, and it goes into the pump. Into not not the pump. The pump is in there, but it goes into here. We're gonna go into more detail on the on the rebuild. Well, let's see if I can get these little tubes out. Got a gasket. And uh, let's see, can I get him with this? There we go, there's one. And there's two. Now these two little tubes, they go in there. I'm not sure if my puller, I wanted to grab it from over here, but it's a smaller thread. Uh, might not come out. Let's see, let's try it on this side. Oh, I only have these two. I wanted to grab it from from here. It's not gonna come out. Wait a minute. This thing has a bolt on the outside too. Take this off. I'm gonna take that off as well. Like the FMXs, they have on the center of the transmission. You disassemble it both ways, and it has three bolts: two on the outside and one on the inside. I already took one on the inside. I'm gonna take this off and that off. Like I mentioned before, I'm not too familiar with these 315s. And my uncle, he's the one that used to do them. He's, he still does transmissions. But, but he's, I've seen him, I've seen him doing these. Let's get the spring out and the valve. There we go. Let me show you this. Gotta take that off. Take that off. Take this off. All that thought. Three quarters. Maybe that doesn't have to come off, but I'm gonna take it off anyways. And it did. This is what is holding. See that tip? That's what's holding that assembly. And this takes an O-ring. Let's get the O-ring off. No, there's no O-ring on here. Maybe it's on here. No. Nope. We're gonna seal that bolt anyways. All right. Now that we have everything removed, I still got a bolt over here. What the what? I'm fighting with this thing and that thing still has a bolt down here. Well, let's see. Yeah. Man, that thing just springed out. <laughs> All right. I have another bolt. It's three bolts. Let's take this off. We remove this. Had a boy. Yeah, we have a spun bushing down here. We have a sprag and we have a spun bushing. We gotta take care of that. I'll take this apart here in, here in a minute. And we have a sprag. Let's see which direction does it turn. It turns counterclockwise, counterclockwise. 
You can see that counterclockwise. Okay. We have a friction plate here. And we have a little washer. Little washer with two tabs. Can't get, there we go. Little washer with two tabs. This is the tab right there. tab goes down and now we got to disassemble it from the opposite direction see the three bolts hold right there the, the assembly now I took two bolts out and I didn't see the other one but oh well there we go now we need to disassemble our parking mechanism otherwise this stuff this thing is not gonna thing is not gonna come out let's see if I can take this off from here There we go. Take the spin off. So we got our parking making our parking pole out of the way now. As you can see here. Now carefully. I'm hanging. Where am I hanging? Band. No, my band is good. Where am I hanging? Did I have a snap ring over here? Probably had a ceiling ring on this side. Let's see. Let's check it out. Yeah, there's a ceiling ring over here. Let's remove the ceiling ring. Ceiling ring. And now we should come out. Come on now. Parking pole, fall down. There we go. It's getting some solid. Stick the snap ring off. I put my safety glass. I took them off because I had a lot of sweat on my eyes. So I can see that fluid won't splash on my face. Fluid behind the snap ring. There we go. Yep. It's a splasher. Two ceiling rings there. Piston. 
Something fell back here. A little wavy. Steels. Another wavy in between. Friction. This one don't have one. But it comes from this side. Take this off here and I don't know why this thing does not want to come out there we go thing didn't want it to come out but this is a little drum I mean it should be assembled like that it should come out all right and we have our band let's go ahead and take this band off Take it off the anchor. Go sideways on it. I'm gonna have to take get it relined, anyways. I mean, it looks a little dark. Let me just try to clean it a little bit. See what it looks like. my blower all right let's see here still rolling right yeah we're rolling Okay, let's see. Got our flashlight. Uh, friction looks all right. We'll get it relined. All right, so we got one set of clutches here. Let's go ahead and put it back in the uh, in the little drum. So we put one of those wavies first and the friction and the steel and then the wavy and the friction and the steel and the other wavy because this drum doesn't have return springs or I should say instead of wavy that would be our return spring and then our steel another return spring another friction now the steel, return spring, and friction. And this is mounted here, and then this drum falls there. It goes like that. Well, no, it goes like this. Go like that. There we go. Anything else in the case? Just that little piece that fell off. Little piece that fell off is for our for our parking pole. Or for our uh, manual valve, no. see anything else in there no nope. let's push that out of the way I'm gonna put it here it came from the rear I'll find out where that thing came from so we have another planet here and we have the ring gear back here on this other drum back in the rear let's go ahead and uh, take our snap ring off so this snap ring goes to this let's keep it all together 
So my challenge right now is going to be finding finding bushings, actually. Bushing kit for this thing. Uh, here's the other piece. So there's actually two pieces that fell off. Let's keep this planet together. So that's our snap ring. It's held by another snap ring. And we have our sun gear that goes all the way to the front to the torque converter or to the fluid coupler. We're going to keep that together. That's one, our snap ring. Then we have our clutch hub. It also splines into the converter, has uh, two shafts going into it, or fluid coupler. We have a ring gear, and we have a regular piston and springs on that. I have another, another snap ring in the rear, but what I'm going to do... I'm going to have to take it apart from the, from the back. snap ring here. This is a spiral snap ring. This is a sprag. I don't want to take that apart. take our ring gear off. It's coming. Let's get it from the back. Probably got a piece of metal stuck on there or something. It's almost out. Get back in there. Make sure that it's nice and clean. No little pieces of metal. Sometimes you find debris kind of tries to hold it together. Atta boy. And as you can see all the frictions are are not in good shape. So here we have, this is a drum. This is a drum. We have, you know, the feed holes there with a sprag and a normal piston. Normal piston, I would say that because of the transmissions that we have today. You can see our clutches are pretty, pretty bad. But the steels are good, even though the clutches are flaking off, the steels are all good. And the ring gear, of course, it's part of our pressure plate here and this is our snap ring Let's put that together all right guys well this is a uh, tear down of a jet away 315 I still got to figure that thing out Let's see what happened here I gotta press this thing out of here it does not look good does not look good at all. Let's see, I'm gonna see if I can go down a little bit to where the snap ring should go. Binds up. Something not. Some. Does not feel right in there. And I'm not sure about this shaft. This shaft should come out. We'll see. 
we have some wear on the side as well so that tells me I need to check if it's ceiling ring group cut no it's not it's not ceiling group cut Let's take this apart. Let's take this apart. Got two dial pins. Have a bunch of metal in it. Got some metal flakes on it. And this is the piece that goes here. So this is our pump right here we have a, a vein type pump like a 4L60 I got uh, plenty of videos on the 4L60E let me just get it closer to you guys over there vein type pump I'll try to keep these frictions together but I'm gonna take everything out of the pump over here and it would be uh, it would be nice if we could get a bushing kit so that I can here's the spun bushing, spun bushing on the pump, the expander rings they don't look too good either. The rotor looks good. It's only one direction that this thing goes and I got a lot of wear on this thing yeah this pump is no good there's a lot of wear on this pump let me get this closer to you guys so you can see I don't think this is the way it should be The wear is mainly on this on this part of the pump. Now I'm gonna take the pump body too. Well, let me get the clutches out first. Well, there, there we go. Get all the clutches out, and then we have a way uh, one-way clutch here. Turns counterclockwise. So here's our pump bushing. It's spun, right? If I can get it in in by hand, no big deal. Boy, it is a big deal. Here we have an expander ring and it cut a groove in there right there you can see that's not supposed to be like that so there is a cut groove now this other groove that you see there that groove it's our pump our our pump rotor cut into that that's why this bushing is spun These two high places on this uh, rotor is what wore that pump out. As you can see, you can see the grooves, and you can see right here the clearance that it's got. That's a lot. I'm not sure the camera is picking that up, but right here, you can see a big old step from the rotor to the uh, pump body. So basically, all of our clutches are gone what I do with the rest of the clutches on this thing oh it's just that one it was just that one clutch all right guys well I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, press this thing out and uh, see what it looks like in there it don't feel good at all so we might need you know what I'm gonna put my uh, my slide hammer there and see the you I can get it off with my slide hammer. I mean, it moves. Okay, I got one out. There is a special tool for this thing, but 
something was wallering in there. It's all wallered out. I really should use two of these. I only got one. gonna come out it looks like it is coming though so I'm gonna need hard parts I'm gonna need the pump and the threads it took it took a lot of this off they only have like two or three threads on this thing on this side I don't have enough threads you know what I'm gonna put you on hold I'm gonna see if I can get a uh, Tractor, see it'll come out. All right, guys. Well, this is as far as we go today on this uh, Jetta Way 315 transmission, and we did the complete teardown except for this piece right here that I couldn't take it apart. And the way it sounds inside, I mean, it's just rubbing. Uh, I'm gonna look more into that. Like I mentioned, I'm not 100% familiar with this transmission in other words I don't do them every day so uh, if you do one every five or eight years you know down the line you kind of forget but my uncle used to do all the old ones and uh, I do rebuild you know like the power you know cast iron power glides aluminum power glides and all the other transmissions that I mentioned and uh, I mean there's basically not much in this inside this transmission uh, jet away the only difference is that you have the uh, fluid coupler that looks like a torque converter in the front of the transmission so this is as far as we're gonna go today on this on this unit I'm gonna gather I'm gonna need to get the pump as I showed you the pump is no good it's all scored up it's uh, I mean as you saw the panty has a lot of metal and I need to figure out what was going on here that I mean it is rubbing pretty bad uh, let me get this closer over there too. You already took my gloves off, but anyways. But what I was talking about is right there. All that rubbing that you see there. That pump was, uh, well, that snap ring was popped off, you know. And uh, so there, there was something going on with it. Let me get a shop towel here right quick. But yeah, uh... So this is far as we, we go right now. I'm, we're gonna clean it up, dress it up real good. Uh, we're probably gonna uh, get some uh, wet sandblasting on the on the main case. We don't want to disturb our nice red tag with all the patent numbers on it. It says uh, trademark hydromatic. Made under one from the U.S. patents, and it's got like maybe 30 patents on it. So, uh, and the tag number it's a 0 57, so it's a 57 90433. That's a serial number. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, this is the old Cadillac, old Cadillac uh, transmission, and I already got the kit over there, the overhaul kit. But anyways, this is part one, and I welcome you guys to uh, Automatic Transmission. That's the name of our channel now. Uh, I, I, I know I had it under my personal name, but it's Automatic Transmission now, and we're going to do uh, more videos uh, on transmission teardowns and rebuilds and some uh, diagnostics and common failures, and we're going to keep it rolling. We're going to keep those trannies rolling. We're going to also, we're going to uh, reline that band even though it looks okay 
the first thing the challenge is going to be oh man look at that yeah this thing was wallering all over the place i didn't show i didn't see that let me show you guys what's what's on this other side let me put my coffee coffee down look at that it's all eaten up all chewed up this thing needs bushings we're gonna need all the bushings i mean i hope that there's a aftermarket place that will make bushings for this thing and this is one of the reasons that i mean i stress that a lot to everybody that wants to build their own unit or other transmission rebuilders you know in the industry that still watch my videos that bushings are very important bushings is going to keep everything center and true you have everything center and true you have less hard part wear you have uh, less uh, cross leakage in between the ceiling rings everything's going to seal better everything's going to run better the shifts are going to be better you're not going to have any flares or pressure drops or anything like that because everything centered and true that will keep everything running much better all right guys well my name is Hiram from uh, automatic transmission channel in YouTube and I thank you guys for guys for watching and also if you're not subscribed yet please subscribe please do so subscribe and uh, that'll keep you notified uh, for my next coming videos and whenever you see uh, the, the name of the channel automatic transmission there's a little bell right there click on that bell and make sure that you get the notification of all the videos that are coming all right guys well subscribe my name is Hiram thank you guys for watching until the next time R2